Hey everybody, Tim Dorman back again to continue our conversation on taxes and retirement. And the next concept I want you to consider to reduce lifetime tax liability, or basically at least be aware of it, is what we call the widow's or widower's tax. Now again, I know these concepts aren't super exciting, but they can certainly move the proverbial needle if you're paying attention. So what is the widow's or widower's tax? What do I mean by that? Well, in the illustration on the screen, what we have is a married couple. We have spouse A and spouse B. Now they have plenty of money. That's not the problem. You know, they worked hard, they were diligent, they were prudent, they saved during their accumulation phase, and they did a great job growing their nest egg. But let's say they get to retirement and they want to live on about $8,000 a month of income. So here's how they get to that amount. They're going to get about $3,000 coming in from their Social Security. And then they're going to have about $3,000 a month in pension coming in the door. And they're going to be taking about $2,000 a month out of their IRAs. And this is going to get them to $8,000 a month or $96,000 per year. And after the standard deduction, they're going to owe the federal government about $7,185 married filing jointly. And that's an average tax rate of 7.9%, so pretty good. Now, if you are married, what do you suppose the odds are that you are going to die on the same day as your spouse? Not good, right? Almost zero. So now their surviving spouse is going to be a widow or a widower. And now they're going to have to walk in to talk to their CPA or their broker or whatever advisor they've been using. And they still have plenty of money. Again, that's not the problem. But unfortunately, they have not been working with a tax planning advisor, a retirement income specialist or a distribution advisor, or basically someone that is going to lay the tax code on top of their situation from a tax perspective. And now they say to their advisor, they say, look, I just lost the love of my life. I hope I don't have to worry about money. I just want to maintain the lifestyle that I have. And of course, the good news is they do have plenty of money. But now they're going to have to rework where that income comes from to so get to that same $8,000 a month. And here's the bad news. They didn't do any tax planning before and now their tax bill on that same income because they are no longer able to file marry filing jointly. And now they're going to have to file single or individual, right? So now their tax on that same income is going to be $12,711 or an average rate of 13.8%. And they used to pay 7.9% on the same income. So that's a 75% increase in their tax bill, basically just because their spouse died. And of course, like I said, the odds of that happening to you are very high if you are married because the odds of you dying on the same day are very low. So if you haven't done any tax planning to take advantage of the beneficial tax treatment of being married filing jointly, you really need to start because the tax code is much more advantageous while you're married. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video. Once again, Tim Dorman here, founder of Eagle Ridge Wealth Advisors. And if you would like to see how we help our clients get the most out of their financial lives in retirement, please visit us at erwealth.com and we hope to see you there.